Hola, buenas. Eh, mi nombre es Josué. Eh, trabajo para AMD en Austin, pero he venido aquí para daros esta presentación. Como se va a grabar y hay gente que es en inglés, pues voy a darla en inglés, ¿de acuerdo? Um, ok. So, this is uh, the title of the presentation. Uh, very politically incorrect. Uh, do theoretical plots matter for real applications performance? Anyone wants to guess whether, you know, if plots matter or not for applications? Well, the politically correct answer would be, well, it depends on the application. Um, so then to prove that, I will show you a few examples from both theoretical and practical point of view in order to validate also uh, experimentally that I have modified a processor from AMD, um, which is named Fangio, and it's a processor version 6275. Um, with respect to a processor uh, 6276, okay? And the modification basically is to slow down the flo floating point capability, and then I'll run a bunch of applications, or a few of them, that are very well understood their behavior. So then you can answer that question, okay? And so what, what I want to, the purpose of this talk is to demonstrate first that the plus per clock for a core of the microprocessor architectures, so it's not necessarily only AMD, it can be Intel or ARM or whatever, okay? Isn't necessarily a good performance metric indicator, okay? Despite that it's heavily used by the industry, like when you run the Limpact benchmark, okay? Um, also, it, it will expose then that code vectorization technology of the compilers mm -hmm. is, is fundamental in order to really extract the performance if you're still interested in measuring it in flops, okay? But uh, the last thing I say is that, okay, we cannot blame completely into compiler technology not being capable of exploring architectures. You know, there, there, there is a, a real problem as well into design of algorithms to exploit those architectures as well, okay? So, kind of, I uh, hope you enjoy it, okay? So I want to talk first of all about kinds of flops because this is very important. And then I will mention about a few features of the Interlagos processor. Everything fine? Yeah, I'm just trying to get rid of this. Okay, it's an advertisement from Macrobot. Okay. <laughs> all right, and so there is another presentation I did uh, in June timeframe that I recommend you to go to get a little more background on the Interlagos technology. And then I go into what's called roof line model. I don't know if you're aware of it, or you know it, but you know you can Google that and you'll find. Then I, I go into this modified processor, Fangio, and then I show uh, you know, this representation of the processor in this roof line model. And finally, I go through some results and conclusions, okay? I've just got 20 minutes, so I better speed up. Okay, so kinds of flops. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know which is the pointer. This one, okay. So these are the instruction types, and these are, you know, in assembly, what would be the instructions, and for any given instruction, these are the amount of flops per clock that can be generated, okay? This is uh, architecture independent, all right? And, and this is the size of, of, of the instruction to ha handle like single position or double position. Uh, uh, SP stands for single position, the DP stands for double position. And then I have scalar versions and pack versions. So these flops in here, it's, it is for, this is for the scalar, it's for, this is, this is eight for the vector versions, like FMA instructions, you know. In, in double position, it's four for a scalar and eight for packed, okay? I don't want to really get into a lot of details of, on this. I just want you to understand that depending on the instructions that you're using, you're going to be able to get more or less flops. So this is important because we're talking a factor of, I mean, from using, for example, SSE2 to FMA4, there's a factor of, 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 of two in here. So it's important for a given architecture to use the right instructions. And that's something I mentioned in the other presentation I did at the HPC Advisory Council. So you want to pay attention about the instructions that you're using. Okay, so the roofline model 
for this AMD Interlagos, one way to represent this is by uh, you got a system, like for example this system with two processors, uh, 2.3 GHz, each of those processors has say 16 cores with a certain <coughs> memory technology, and then you look at the Limpact benchmark, and then you look at the stream number, and then it's gonna give you a real number of say 250 gigaflops, I put it here like the, uh, an average of 85% of efficiency when you run Limpact. And then this is a, uh, when you run the stream benchmark, you get something like 72 gigabytes per second, okay? It is Im important to understand that when you're running Limpack, it is a very high numerical intensity application because it uses, for example, the AMD Core Math Library where the data is extremely cache friendly, so there is a high reusability of the data. And as you know, the Limpack is mostly about the DGN, which is an L3 blast, and the arithmetic is order N, so it's the problem size, okay? If you're looking into the stream benchmark, it has very low numerical intensity. I don't know if you know what is numerical intensity, but it's basically the ratio of um, how many flops you can get generated with a byte of data that you are throwing into the course. So it's, it's important to throw a very small amount of data and do as much crunching as possible, okay? So the higher the numerical intensity, you know, the more flops you're gonna get. So in the Limpact, it has high numerical intensity, so you just throw in there, say, one byte, and you're getting out of it 10, 10 flops, for example. So on, the numerical intensity would be 10. On the stream benchmark though, it is a really, really low, the numerical intensity, because you're bringing in a chunk of data and you just crunch it once. You throw it and then you get a new, a new chunk. So that takes a lot of time for the course to bring that data. That's why you don't actually get to generate many, many flops, because you spend most of your time waiting for the data to get into the caches, okay? All right. Um, so this uh, processor, the Fangio, uh, has this FPU capping where I go from eight double position flops per clock that is capable that, uh, that processor, the 6276, to two double position flops per clock. So I'm slowing down the FPU retirement of the instructions. That's what, what I'm doing in here. I'm not touching anything else but that. So, so it allows to run all, their, all the instructions that, I, that we were mentioning, all those floating point instructions. And then if I look into the uh, basic performance figures on that system with just the FPU capping changed, with the FPU changed, then for example, the performance, it will depend on the workload. For example, if I run the Limpact benchmark, I will only get 75 dollar position gigaflops. While before, we were getting um, 250 double position gigaflops, okay? So this is a way to verify that actually I'm, I'm dropping the performance on, in terms of flops. But if I look at the bandwidth, I don't get any performance difference, okay? The reason why I don't get it is because the cores are simply waiting to get the data. Once they get the data, they'll crunch it. So it doesn't matter if I'm slowing down the FPU because the cores are simply waiting, okay? So I wrote in red here, you know, the, the, there's unmodified memory throughput performance. Okay, for instance, if I run Limpack, you know, you can see here like about 250 gigaflops for the 6276, and then for this one, uh, only 78 gigaflops. It took a lot of time, three times longer time, you see? So this was a way to verify this empirically, okay? So it, it, it shows what it needs to show. So it per performance matter, you know, for you know, the, the flops. But if I run the stream benchmark on the 6276 or the 75, you can see what I get, you know. I get a wide range between 73 to 66, but copy, I'm just moving data from one place to another. And if I want to look at the flaws that are being generated, I may want to look into the triad, for example, where I do the product plus an addition, and because I am on an Interlagos processor, so I can use FMA for instructions. But it doesn't matter because, I mean, theoretically, it's capable of doing eight flaws per clock, but, but as I said, the, the, the cores are waiting for, to get the data in, okay? Okay, so then I, so here it's a kind of a summary of the Limpact, the stream triad. Uh, these are measured numbers, and then for example, I run a CFD application, open form, okay? When I run that, uh, you can see these numbers in red. This is what I measure. For example, the gigabytes per second, this number six in here, times four equal 24 gigabytes per second. Uh, a two socket processor will have a total of four Numa nodes. 
and 32 cores in 16 compute units. So this six stands for six gigabytes, each NUMA node it's driving times four NUMA nodes equal 24 gigabytes. Um, the dollar positions of the gigaflops are, are measured per core. So every core is capable of 7.8 gigaflops, which is uh, the efficiency of something like 85% times 32 cores, it gives me the 250 gigaflops, okay? Now, if I do the ratio between those two numbers, it gives me the arithmetic intensity of, say, 10.6. Now, if you look at the Interlagos pro uh, Fangi processor, um, it, it sort of sustains the same arithmetic intensity. I have a slow down the gigaflops, but it, and it proportionally slowed down the gigabytes per second. Why? Because, of course, when they were getting the data, they were slow, crunching the data, and it did ask for data more slowly, okay? But if we're on the, on the stream benchmark, it doesn't change at all, you know, because you're just asking for a chunk, which takes a lot of time, it crashes and then gets rid of it, and you know, they, it doesn't make any difference with the FPU running uh, slower or faster, okay? Uh, CFD applications are very, very much <coughs> memory-bound applications, and there are many, many other applications that behave the same way. So for instance, when I do those measurements, I get similar bandwidth measurements, a little bit lower on this one, and a, a little bit lower flops, and the arithmetic intensity is kind of the same, okay? So that basically tells you that there is no performance difference between this processor and this processor when I run real applications like memory-bound applications. Okay, so this is the roof line when I put it here at both Interlagos and Fangio, you see the measured plot, measured numbers, you know, like, for example, the Limpa grant on Interlagos is up here, and the Limpa grant for Fangio is down here. Then here is a stream which doesn't change for any of those processors. And here, for example, I have a Open Form or, for example, Fluent or Star CC, and for example, any of those CFD applications which are very memory bound. And any other, you know, sparse solver with high order density, when you increase high order density, then you will increase a little bit the numerical intensity. So I just kind of draw that in here. I also show here spec numbers which are dropping only in the range of only 8%, okay? Just realize I have dropped by a factor of 3x the flop capability, the theoretical, and it just dropped 8% the real performance of the, of, of the average of the spec benchmarks. I mean, the spec benchmarks change from 3 to 20%, but in average only 8, okay? I hope it makes you think about all of this, okay? Um, so, for instance, uh, up here, you know, when you're using L3 Blast, so definitely it benefits from vectorization, so using those FMA, IVX, and SSC instructions. But for example, down here, you know, this is sparse algebra, so there's a lot of data dependencies, a lot of scalar code, you know, and, and there is no benefits from the vectorization, okay? So it, it has to do with the nature of the application, with the nature of the algorithms, that you cannot exploit the architectures. Okay, so this is kind of the summary. Uh, I put a bunch of bullets in here. The red ones are the most important ones. Uh, most of the CFD applications, I put here that we carried off Eulerian formulation. Because Lagrangian formulation, you can do particles and it's embarrassingly parallel and then you can do a lot of heavy computation in parallel and then flops matter. But for a lot of the uh, commercial CFD applications actually are written with Eulerian formulation, okay? So they use sparse linear algebra, especially when you're playing with non-structured grids. Then I was mentioning before that higher discretization schemes may help on the arithmetic intensity, so then it, it floods help, you know. Um, due to the de data dependencies in both spe spatial and time, prevent vectorization. There are some tricks you can do to break this data dependency, it will change the convergence of algorithms, but you can take profit of those uh, vector instructions. If you're playing with larger data sets, which is the reality, you know, then you have very low cache reutilization, so it's very memory bound as well. Um, the cores, therefore, are waiting most of the time to get the new data into the caches, so it doesn't matter whether you got higher core frequencies or this, you know, high flop capability, because you don't get to use that. Uh, compilers have a hard time in finding opportunities to vectorize those kinds of loops. Uh, for instance, there are techniques like loop and rolling and partial vectorization of independent data. Even if they are like out of order, then you just put them in a nice order and you can vectorize. Um, therefore, there is a low performance from FLOP's point of view, which is what I wanted to express right at the beginning. Uh, therefore, this capping of the FPU in terms of FLOPs does not impact on application's performance. And, and finally, uh, the answer, right? Theoretical FLOPs isn't therefore a good indicator of 
how applications such as CFD ones and many more, uh, by I mean by the measurements that I've done on spec benchmarks, for example, then w they they will not be affected. You know, um, so it's it's not that important. I think you know the theoretical flops. And with that, I I conclude the presentation. If you have questions. All right. Thank you, Jeff.